how's it going guys? This is Dave2D. So I did a review on the Asus GL502 a while back, but Asus, along with a bunch of other computer manufacturers, have updated their laptops with the new Pascal-based chips. This is an updated video. The old GL502 came in two variants, the thicker VY and the thinner VT. That's the one I actually did the video on. The updated GL502 also comes in two variants, the thicker VS and the thinner VM, which I have here, and that comes equipped with a GTX 1060. Let's first talk about what hasn't changed. The dimensions and the exterior casing hasn't changed. It's still an aluminum top panel with a polycarbonate body. The keyboard, trackpad, and the speakers haven't changed either. They're all pretty good, especially the trackpad. Internally, the RAM, the CPU, and the cooling systems haven't changed. It still has one slot of upgradable RAM and two upgradable storage areas. There's now support for HDMI 2.0, which is cool, but there were rumors that the refresh would also support Thunderbolt 3. My model doesn't. I'm not sure if it was just a rumor or if it's just a region thing, but this particular model, the 502 VM, does not support it. The things that have changed are the graphics card and the new G-Sync screen. So this is now rocking the NVIDIA GTX 1060, a really nice performance bump from the previous generation. For moderately demanding games like Overwatch, at 1080p, you'll be around 95 frames per second on Epic settings. Something a little heavier like Batman Arkham Knight on Ultra, it's just under 60 frames per second. Witcher 3 on high will get you mid 60 frames per second. On Ultra, it's around 40 frames per second. So in general, it's about a 40, maybe 40 45% increase in performance over the 970M. It's even better performing than the 980M. This is a really nice card. So with the GTX 1060, the GL502 can comfortably handle VR. The 970M on the original GL502 I reviewed was on the cusp of handling VR. And you could play some games with pretty smooth frame rates, but with the 1060 in this one, you're deep in the area of a comfortable VR experience. Video editing is also faster, so render times for Adobe Premiere are around 5 to maybe 10% faster, depending on your composition. In terms of thermal performance under load, the older 502 with the 970M had relatively quiet fans, but the system ran a little warm. With the 1060, the fan noise is still quieter than you'd expect for this kind of performance, but load temperatures are still warm. In fact, I'm measuring slightly hotter temperatures than the older 502. Fortunately, there's still no CPU or GPU throttling, even on benchmarks. The laptop just runs warm. It's not uncomfortable to use, the contact areas aren't hot, and it's not something that'll destroy your laptop, but if you live in a hot environment, keep it in mind. The screen is a new panel. It's still an IPS 1080p panel, and it's just as bright, but I noticed that this new screen isn't as color accurate. It's still pretty good, but the older screen had surprisingly good color accuracy. The trade-off is that this display now has G-Sync, and G-Sync is the tech that basically smoothens out your frame rates if there's any kind of screen tearing from frame drops. So there's a chip in the screen that'll maintain your frame rates and give you smooth gameplay, well, to the best of its ability. The negatives to a G-Sync display is the fact that you lose NVIDIA Optimus. And if you're unfamiliar with Optimus, he's the leader of the Autobots. <laughs> no, it's the technology that allows your laptop to switch between graphics cards. So if you're playing games or you're doing 3D stuff, it'll use your discrete graphics chip. In this case, the GTX 1060. But the moment you stop doing that, the moment you're like typing an essay or just browsing the web, it'll switch to the integrated graphics chip to help save power. And if you have G-Sync, you lose that feature. And that brings up the last point in this video. Battery life on the older 502 wasn't amazing, but it was respectable at around three and a half hours of regular use. The updated 502 has a measurably shorter battery life of three hours, and this is with screen brightness equal between the two, both at 250 nits. Okay, the Pascal-based refresh is a nice step up in performance. The GTX 1060 just crushes games at 1080p, and the G-Sync panel is actually really nice to look at, but keep in mind that you're getting a reduced battery life and the panel isn't as color accurate as the old one. But if you're looking for a thin and light laptop in this form factor at this price point, the new GL502 is a really nice option. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. And if you wanna learn more about this laptop, like you wanna learn about the older features that I didn't mention in this video, check out the old one. I'll link it somewhere.